Hello, this is Ken from the Computer Clan here today to talk about OS X Yosemite and Windows Arrow. Now, Apple introduced OS X Yosemite in June, early June, and we have put up a demo video about the new system. We have received, I don't know, about a dozen or two dozen comments about how a lot of the Yosemite UI was quote-unquote copied from Windows Arrow. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that companies have a lot of smart people in them, so if some companies have similar ideas to others, it just means great minds think alike. As long as you're not really breaking patents and, like, infringing on patents or whatever, you know, because that's illegal, it's really okay. Nothing bad's gonna happen. It's just software. It just shows that great minds think alike. But I would like to demonstrate how a lot of the elements in these interfaces are actually quite different. So let's start with the basics. Transparency. Both interfaces utilize transparency. Windows 8 doesn't use Arrow anymore, but the predecessor 7 has used Arrow. Now, Arrow was introduced in Windows Vista in 2007, early 2007, and late 2006 for the RTM. And the OS X Yosemite interface, which is replacing Aqua, was introduced in 2014 at WWDC 2014. In terms of this comparison, yes, Arrow came before the Yosemite UI, but what a lot of people forget is that actually the first version of OS X back in 2001 had a pretty healthy amount of transparency in it. And back in 2001, a lot of systems weren't doing this, hardly any, so this was a very big change for user interfaces this long ago. So as you can see, the dock had transparency, inactive window title bars had transparency, sheets had transparency, menus had transparency. OS X has had transparency ever since the first release. So now we can say OS X actually had transparency before Arrow, but does it really matter? No, it does not matter at all. Because we could also say glass was transparent and it was discovered a long time ago before Windows and OS X, so we're not gonna say Hey, hey, OS X, you're copying silicon dioxide. It was transparent before you were... Or you could even say water was transparent before glass was. See, it's stupid. It really doesn't matter. But now, let's have a little more fun and go more in-depth on how the elements are utilized with transparency. So, for example, in Windows, you can see transparency in the taskbar, in window borders, some window toolbars, the start menu, and some specific window fills. For example, when you open up the gadgets picker, that whole window utilizes the arrow transparency look and feel. On Yosemite, you will notice the dock uses transparency. So does the menu bar, menus, sidebars, window toolbars, stacks from the dock, and some other specific window fills, such as the Safari favorites view. So that was how some of the transparency is used across the system, but now let's get even more specific and talk about the design of the transparency. In Windows, the arrow theme can have user-defined colors. You can pick them right from the control panel. And the overall glass look is kind of glossy, and it has a light blur effect behind it for that glass effect. In addition, when a user clicks off of a window, the arrow glass is still present, but it loses the color. So it's still transparent, but there's no color in it. In OS X Yosemite, the transparency adapts to the underneath objects. For example, sidebars, the dock, some specific window fills, and menus adapt to any object that is lying beneath them. So if I dragged a window beneath the dock, you would see the transparency effect there. If I opened up a menu over a window or the desktop wallpaper, you would see the transparency there too. Toolbars, on the other hand, only adapt to window contents. They do not show the desktop wallpaper through their transparency. So, for example, if you're scrolling in an image or on a web page and that scrolled content goes beneath the toolbar, you will see the blurry glass effect show those colors. And the menu bar on the top of the desktop interface only adapts to the wallpaper. No other UI elements can be dragged beneath it. 
Yosemite's glass effect also uses a heavier blur for abstraction. As you can see in the images below, in the Windows arrow picture, you can see the Windows emblem behind that window. It is a lot more discernible. But in the Yosemite interface, the frosted glass look is way more blurry. This is basically just to add abstraction to get the general colors to soak through, to make it adapt in a way without it being too specific as to showing what picture is laying behind your UI elements. It's mainly just for the color. Also, any Yosemite windows and sidebars that a user would typically be dragging around and using, if a user clicks off of them, they turn opaque. Only the frontmost window actually uses this glassy effect in terms of windows and sidebars. When a user clicks off of them, they go opaque. Yosemite also comes with a light or dark theme and certain UI elements can be turned dark via a control panel item in the system preferences. And some UI elements are darker to begin with. Some HUDs are like this and so is the notification center. So that is a quick overview of how these interfaces may be similar, but are actually very, very different. It's just like comparing an elephant to a mouse. At the end of the day, they're both animals, they're both gray, and they both have tails. But if you look at them much closer, you will see that they are worlds apart. So thank you for tuning into this presentation, and I hope you learned something new. Feel free to leave any comments or questions that you would like, and I will do my best to get back to you about your inquiries and comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. If you wish to stay updated with real deal uploads, smash that subscribe button and hit that like button if you liked the video. Want to get a behind the scenes look at the computer clan? Feel free to sign up on our CC Backstage forum. And if you wish to see more content from us, visit us on thecomputerclan.com.